Let me welcome Kunde. And I'm not only here to share my story, but I'm also here to let you know that I'm not just a mother, but I'm a fighter. A fighter for independence, a fighter for your lives, my lives, our children's lives, our children's future, the real future. So on March 31st, 2016, just 15 months ago, my daughter, Dominique Battle, and my other two babies, Lenaya Miller and Ashante Butler, were murdered at the hands of the state, the police, the St. Petersburg Police Department, and the Sheriff's Office, the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. 17 officers got in a car and chased my babies to their death. At 4 a.m. that morning, they were gone. They had been murdered. But they refused to let me know anything about my babies. I didn't find out until 11.30 a.m. while I'm at work. And they show up to my job. And they asked to speak to me. And I don't go all the way out the door because I have never done anything wrong with the law. So I don't know why they dare to begin with. And the police start asking me questions. They want to know what my children had on. Where were my other children at? Who was taking care of them? But never once did they show any sympathy. And I ask them why, why are you asking these questions? You know, because I've done nothing wrong and this child like child to protect the services to me. So I'm like, what's going on? Really, what's going on? And that's when he looks me in my face and tell me that my daughter Dominique Bella was dead. Now I gotta start asking them questions. How did she die? What happened to Lanaya and the Shunty? Because they were all together. And he looks at me and say they dead too. So you know what I did? I tried to fight their ass. I tried to get them because I knew they had this up to my babies. And they holding me and they tried to tell me that they wasn't chasing them. Okay. But your own dash cam shows that y'all released, that y'all was going to 93 miles per hour behind these girls. The police report states that they didn't run a red light, that they didn't get stopped for any traffic laws at all, for violating any other state laws. So why were they chasing them? Because they was driving in a car. Because they were young, 16 and 15 year old girls out at night driving in a car. And so they felt like they had to get behind them with no sirens on or anything. And you think these girls are supposed to pull over to a car that's unmarked that they don't even know? And then you continue to chase them even after you was told not to chase them by the upper force. And you murdered my babies. And you thought I was gonna be quiet. But oh no. I dragged my butt off that couch and I went down into that press conference that was being held and I let them know that y'all wasn't going to slander these girls' names. Y'all wasn't going to make it was the parents' fault because it wasn't. It was the state's fault. It was the goons that they sent out after us. And I realized that I wasn't the only one fighting for these girls like I thought I was. The hero movement was already out there fighting for them holding protests, putting out propaganda about what really happened that night, putting out the real pictures, the pictures that were released by the police. 
Those same pictures that's incriminating the police. The back of that car, the bumper was dented in and hanging halfway off. You can't tell me that you drive straight into a pun and then your bumper come up like that and you drove straight into a pun. You can't tell me that. The top of that car was dented and it's been flipped over before I even let it in the water. But you're not going to sit here and tell me that you did not kill my daughters. You're not going to sit here and tell me that you did not chase my daughters. Because the education that I have, the one that my African ancestors instilled in me, tells me otherwise, shows me otherwise. You want to believe the science? The science is there. Look at that car. Look at their statements and the lies that they put out. And then they continued to lie over, over and over again. I couldn't even keep up with the lies they were telling. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew then that I had to join a force. Someone who was going to do something about the fight that the system, that the state had murdered these girls and continued to murder Africans all over the United States of America. And yes, I say snakes because that's exactly what they are. They stole this land from the Mexican people, the indigenous people, and put them in concentration camps and think that we're supposed to sit quietly and not do anything about it. No. I'm a mother warrior for independence, and my independence is in my African people, and it's in the brown people, it's within the indigenous people. Get back their things, their resources, their land, everything that belongs to them. That's my fight. I don't want any of that money that they want to give you when you go to court and take the court. I'm taking the ass to court. All of them. All 17 of those officers will be jailed. I promise that. One way or another, my fight will not end until all of them see justice. They can keep their hush money because I'm going to talk about this case until I'm taken off this yeah. earth. Yeah. I'm going to talk about this case until we are free. Until all African people are free. And to the white people out here, I ask you to join the right side of the question. Because the question is, do you really want to be with the oppressor or do you want to be with the oppressed people and understand that they want their lives back, that they want their resources back, that they want to be able to house, feed, and close their families? That's my question to you. To commit class suicide, to understand that we fight for equal Liberty for all Africans, for liberation of our lives. Enough is enough, and I don't have enough. My tears that I shared today and that I continue to shed are not just for those three girls, but are for all Africans, for Trayvon Martin, for Sandra Bland, for all Africans who have died at the hands of the state, and for all horizontal violence, because horizontal violence is still the state. Black on black violence, you may say, we're killing ourselves. No, we're not killing ourselves. We are oppressed people. Our lives have been stolen from us since we came into this world. They came 600 years ago to Africa, and they stole us, and they beat us, and they raped us. And they continue to do it today. They lock our women and children and men up in these prison cells and give them all this time. Ridiculous, 600 years, um, giving them 30 years in prison or more. But then they legalize marijuana. <laughs> Come on now. Are they serious? So y'all need to open up them jail cells and everybody y'all got enough for this so-called drug, I don't care if it's crack cocaine, marijuana, speed, whatever it is that y'all got the men and women in the prison cells for, let them out now. The state is going to crumble. It's going to fall. And it's going to crumble in my lifetime. In your lifetime. You're breaking it down. Get with an organization that is willing and fight and believing in all Africans and all oppressed people of the world. Because that's the only solution, is to join the revolution. The only solution. And I don't just stand around or sit on my behind and not do anything. I do the work. I go out into the communities. I talk to the people. I knock on doors. I do flyers and door hangers and let people know. I sell the burning spirit newspaper to let people know that this is the only organization that means and stands behind what they say. I couldn't have said, yes, let me go with the you know, Black Lives Matter because they did try to come after me, but I know better because it's not that Black Lives Matter, it's that Black Power Matters. And that's the main thing that we have to remember, that Black Power is the key. It's the only thing.
happening. Black community control of the schools, black community control of the police, black community control. The black power is the only way. So I stand here before you as a mother who has known the pain of losing a child, who has known the pain of losing a friend, who knows the pain of losing an African. I'm asking all white folks and all black folks and the upper class as well to commit class suicide, to understand that you have to be on the right side of the line when a revolution comes, because it's going to come. There's no doubt about it. And these police officers who are supposed to be so scared for their lives, who feel like they have to murder <laughs> us, no. But let me tell you about the police officer who got behind my daughter and her two friends and murdered them. That wasn't his first murder. Because in 2002, he murdered another African, 18 year old boy, Latiboria Felton, in the pond, drowning him. And then beat him on the head so severely that half his brain had collapsed. Mm -hmm. But they want to say that the last time they saw him, he was doing a bike stroke and a pun with debris, so much debris in it, you couldn't even step in it really. But they want to say that they did not go into that pun to save my three girls because the water was so deep. But you're the same officer who took out the bike seat of his car to use as flotation device to go after the boy you felt it, did not do the same thing to go after those three girls. They just stood around and watched them. And on the video camera, you could hear them talking. They talk about how they could hear them screaming. And then other police officers say, they're effing done, man. They're effing done. And if you didn't think they put a fire under my bahado, oh, we put a fire under there. Because what they did in the dark has come to the light. And I'm going to fight, fight, fight. I refuse to give up. I refuse to let them get the best of me. No longer are they able to rape me silently. No longer are they able to beat me silently. No longer are they able to take my life, my rights. And they won't be taking yours either. Because like I said, I'm here to fight. And if you don't believe in my stance and you don't believe in me, that's okay. Because I'm still going to fight for you. I'm still going to fight for your liberation. I'm still going to fight for you to be free. When Mother Africa has all of her resources turned to her, her coating, her diamonds, her cocoa, and so much more, we turn to Mother Africa yes. when I am yes. able to go home and really live the life of freedom, really live to be able to feed and clothe and house my family and my children and live off the land like we once did before, then my fight will have ended. But until that day, I'm going to fight I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight, and I'm going after every corrupt person that is in the United States of America and all over the place that are ruining us because that's exactly what they're doing. They're scared of us and they fear us because one billion strong, we are one. Yes, are. And they know that. So they try to scare us off by killing this person and killing that person. Try to make us scared to defend ourselves and to fight by it. But damn it, it's time to resist. We have to come together as one. We have to be united with our brothers and our sisters. We have to protect our children and see that our children have a true future. Because the future that they tell them now is not our future. So before I leave here, I want to say that I am one building strong, and so are you. Join me. Join the Ahiri movement. Join the solidarity movement because it's the only movement that does exactly what it says it does. Freedom, liberation, housing, clothing, and freedom our own people. Mm. Working day and night, nonstop, for your freedom, for our freedom. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Thank you.
touch one. Touch one.